Good morning, and welcome to Hillsborough United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ben Hanna, and I am still on paternity leave, and I don't have my special guest, my now one week and one day old son, with me because here a week and a day in, I have learned the value of not interrupting n when he's sleeping <laughs> uh, because, well, all you parents understand. It is a pleasure to welcome you into worship this morning and an even larger pleasure for me to introduce to you our guest speaker for today, Ben Wheeler. Ben is the youth director at McPherson First United Methodist Church. And Ben and I have been friends since 2006 uh, when we met on a, a youth director's outing trip uh, one Friday evening and we have been close friends ever since. Through Ben's steady leadership uh, and ability to bring others to the work, um, he and I, along with a huge team of other hardworking youth directors and pastors, have uh, labored over the years to help uh, come alongside Camp Horizon in their middle and high school camps for, well, a long time. He is an incredibly gifted leader of youth and young people, uh, and I'm excited to have him and welcome him into worship this morning. <clears throat> a few and other announcements as we begin. Uh, a reminder that with uh, incident race, er, rates in the county continuing to rise for the coronavirus, we have suspended in-person worship. Uh, last week, <clears throat> after looking at the data, the numbers uh, basically remained unchanged, which means that according to the guidelines that we've set out, it means that at best, we will return to worship the first Sunday of December. This means that we will not have in-person worship on the 29th of uh, November, which is hard because that's the first Sunday of Advent. <clears throat> but in my uh, sleep-deprived uh, sense, 
I'm working on some ways for us to celebrate the season of Advent, whether online or in person, in ways that do what Advent is designed to do, which is to center our hearts on the mercy and the love of Christ, who comes to us in the simple and innocent and vulnerable form of a child, to remind ourselves that we are not simply citizens of this earth in this moment, but you and I are citizens of eternity, held close by the love of a God who made us, who has saved us, and who will continue to walk beside us both here and for all time, and who will not let us fall from his caring embrace. <clears throat> This is uh, this means that uh, we continue to be on the lookout for more information. Um, if I'm pulling out my crystal ball for just a moment, it seems like cases in the county might be declining. But the warning I might place on that is uh, the health department has signaled that they pretty much are maxed out in their testing uh, capacities. And they've said that if you feel unwell, just start the quarantine process, which means that we're testing fewer people, which might make our numbers look artificially lower for the moment. Continue to look out well for one another. Keep doing the things that you all have all been doing so well that help protect us and our families and the people that we love and the people that we love but haven't met, the ones we pass on the street and work beside uh, on the job site and uh, pass next to in the middle of the grocery store. That is who we are as the followers of Jesus Christ, the ones who look out for everyone else around them and love them as Jesus loved them. This means that not only online person is suspended, but also youth group and kids club are also suspended for the moment. And um, I look for the day that we can all be back in worship soon. I'm, I'm hopeful it will happen before the end of the year but uh, I invite your prayers. But more than that, I invite your full participation within our faith community uh, through online worship, <clears throat> through a couple other things that will be showing up as soon as I'm off of paternity leave. And uh, we will continue to do the work of preparing our hearts and minds and lives to following Jesus like we've always done. And now it is with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker for today and our opening prayer from Ben Wheeler. Well, Hillsboro United Methodist Church, it is good to be with you this morning. As we begin our time together, I would like to uh, invite us to take a moment and center ourselves in prayer. Uh, so as we do this, I, I'd love to invite you to find a posture that's comfortable for you. Um, as we enter into a time of prayer together. Uh, this morning's prayer uh, comes from Hoob uh, Oosterhaus, uh, a 20th century priest in Amsterdam. Uh, so will you join me in prayer? How many times, God, have we been told that you are no stranger, remote from those who call upon you in prayer? Let us see, God, and know in our lives now that those words are true. Give us faith and give us the joy of recognizing your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, in our midst. Make us receptive and open, and may we accept your kingdom like children taking bread from the hands of their Father. Let us live in your peace at home with you all the days of our lives. Amen. Our epistle is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason that I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelations that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see 
What is the hope of God's call? What is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers? And what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers? This power is conferred conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named, not only now, but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ who fills everything in every way. The Sovereign of the Universe calls us by name. Lord of life, who has measured the earth's foundation and counted the stars of the sky, the sight of your throne room calls me to my knees. My lips are unclean, and I live among people who bow to other gods. Cover me, cleanse me, protect me, Renew me. How can I stand but by your hand? How can I look without your shade? How can I speak without your word? I depose the clutter of my toy gods. You are my Lord. You are my King. I give my allegiance to your crown. I give my service to your kingdom. Make me your soldier, make me your citizen, make me your servant. Amen. At the end, it is Jesus Christ, the righteous, who will stand beside us. We will be called by Christ's name, children of the King of Kings and servants of the Lord of Lords. Thanks be to God. Our gospel is from the evangelist Matthew. Lift up your hearts as we hear the gospel. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. 
I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accused, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I remember New Year's Eve 1999. Uh, it was in the middle of my sophomore year of college, uh, and I was at my parents' house, and I invited some friends over uh, so that we could celebrate New Year's Eve together. Um, there, there was this weird feeling about it, though, um, uh, we all wondered, could this be it? Could this be the end of the world? Or, um, you know, as uh, REM says, uh, the end of the world as we know it. Um, uh, we wondered, would Y2K take us down? Uh, and if you're you know, under 20 years old, you probably have no idea what Y2K was, right? Um, would Jesus be coming back? Would this... Would this be it, 2,000 years and we're calling it a day? Or would um, midnight come and go and we would still be here? Um, and it turned out midnight came and went. Uh, the ball dropped in New York City uh, and uh, the earth kept spinning. Uh, but as I reflect on, on New Year's, um, I'm terrible at making New Year's resolutions. Uh, at, there's something about New Year's resolutions that just doesn't sit well with me. And am I the only one? I, I sure hope I'm not the only one. Um, but there's something about choosing an arbitrary day uh, and saying, uh, this now is, is what I'm going to do moving forward. Um, it just... It's, it's never really connected with me. It's never really made sense with me. I can pick any day to be a better human being. Why not today? So instead of, instead of making New Year's resolutions, one of the things that I've, that I've tried to work on uh, is forming habits. Uh, and uh, there's actually been a lot of research done recently on habits and how habits are formed and how they're changed and and uh, uh, how they're replaced. Um, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in habits, I'd like to recommend a book to you, and it's called uh, The Power of Habit by Dr. Charles Duhigg. Um, one of my former interns and I read that book together, and it was amazing what we learned about uh, the habits that we currently have and the ways that we can develop uh, new habits. Um, 
We know now that it takes 21 days to form a habit, uh, but we also know that habits cannot be erased, that they have to be replaced. And then if you don't stick with the new habit, that old habit can come back. Uh, it's, it's just part of how our brains are wired. So if I want to make a change in my life, I need to commit to that change for the next 21 days in order for it to become a habit. So today, as we, as we gather together on uh, November 22nd, uh, we are here and we are celebrating Christ the King Sunday. We've been in this lesson series, this sermon series uh, called The Return of the King. Uh, and today is the day that we celebrate the return of the King. Uh, in the Anglican Church, interestingly enough, this is called Stir Up Sunday. Um, I don't know if they do this motion, but I think it's fun. Um, and it gets its name from uh, the beginning of the Collect for the Day uh, in the Book of Common Prayer, which begins with the words, Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people. Uh, Christ the King Sunday is also the last Sunday before the season of Advent. Uh, the first Sunday in Advent being the beginning of the Christian year. Uh, so this makes Christ the King Sunday the last Sunday of the Christian year. That's right, folks. It's Christian New Year's Eve. See what I did there? Tying it all together. So for our scripture passage uh, today, we're talking about when Jesus, uh, actually, you know, Jesus was talking about when uh, he would come back and, and what would happen in, uh, in that time. And when he does, he separates um, humanity into two groups signified by, uh, by sheep and by goats. Uh, and the sheep will be placed at his right hand and the, the goats will be placed at his left hand. The right hand being the good side, the left hand being the bad side. Now, uh, I don't know much about sheep or goats. I, I didn't grow up uh, in an agricultural uh, area. Um, uh, all I do know is that sheep equals good and goats equals bad and that we do want to be sheep, but we don't want to be goats. Um, and so in my brief research into this topic of sheep and goats, and by that I mean Googling it, uh, which is what we all mean by research right now, right? Um, it seems that sheep tend to follow the shepherd and stay with the herd, and goats tend to do whatever they want. So the sheep follow the shepherd, but the goat herd has to follow the goats. I didn't even know there was a term goat herd until... I did my, my Googling. Uh, the sheep follow the voice of the shepherd and trust him uh, or her to lead them to food, water, safety. And if they wander, which some do, the shepherd will go out to rescue them and bring them back to the safety of the flock. Sheep separated from their shepherd and flock are nervous and vulnerable because they don't have any offensive or defensive uh, survival abilities. Uh, a goat, however, doesn't follow anybody. Uh, a herd of goats goes where it wants, and the goat herd just follows behind. Uh, instead of grazing, goats browse. Uh, they forage for whatever strikes their fancy in the moment. Uh, so that tells us that if we are allowing ourselves to be led, being sensitive to the pull of God's spirit and following the path of our shepherd, it would make sense then that we are sheep. But we're, if we're headstrong, going our own way, doing what, whatever we want, pulling back against God's spirit, it would make sense that we would be considered to be goats. So uh, I just want to read uh, this section of Matthew um, because I think it gives us some clarity about uh, Jesus' intentions and what Jesus is saying. Um, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. They will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. When did we see you and not take care of you? It's a big question. And in the end, I believe we're going to be asked to give an account, to give an account for what we did with our lives, with, with this opportunity that we have here on earth. And the way that we care for the people in need is a direct reflection of our relationship with God. As we did it for them, we did it for him. So are we on the lookout for others or are we on the lookout for ourselves? Are we being sheep or are we being goats? So it's, it's Christian New Year's Eve, and next Sunday we, we begin in Advent. We begin the new year of the Christian year. And what would it look like if we began this new Christian year with some new habits? What if we started to see the brokenness that is all around us and actually entered into it to do something about it. What if we asked God, well, this is a dangerous prayer now because I believe that God will answer it, but what if we asked God to open our eyes to see the people that God puts in our path? What if we sought to follow the shepherd like sheep, instead of doing whatever we want all the time, like goats. See, I believe our time's not up. And that like Ebenezer Scrooge on Christmas morning, we can choose to aim our lives in a different direction. That we can become sheep instead of goats. Now, could you imagine what it would look like if the full force of the church was unleashed to care for the hungry, the thirsty, the strangers, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned? Imagine, can you imagine what this world could look like? Imagine what your community could look like if the churches, if the church, capital C, church was unleashed to do this, it would change everything. And it can start today. This isn't something you have to wait until January 1st or uh, the first Sunday of Advent. This isn't something you have to wait. Right now, today, you could hop on your phone, find out somebody that's in need. I bet if you start praying today, God will bring someone to your mind that needs what you have to give. 
Church, we can do this. We can be the change we want to see in the world. Now, imagine if we start doing this and what our world could look like a year from now if all of the people that call themselves Christians began to enter in and care for the poor, the needy, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the imprisoned, the brokenhearted. We would begin to experience what I believe, what, I, what, what I've heard termed as the good that only the good know. And it could change everything. Church, are you with me? Amen. Well, this week, I'd love to invite you to hold the people that are about to appear on your screen in prayer. Uh, if you have joys or concerns that you would like to uh, have lifted up, uh, please email the church office. Uh, I believe the email address will be on the screen. Um, or feel free to call them in as well. Uh, so will you pray with me? Uh, God, you are mighty and awesome and wonderful and powerful. We pause in this moment to give you our thanks and praise. Continue to open our hearts and minds to the work that you're doing here in Hillsborough and all around the world. Form us in love that we might join you in this work. God, we lift up the holidays that we are approaching. For some, these will be a time of joy. For others, these will be a time of grief as we are separated from loved ones by distance, by safety, by illness, or by death. Remind us that we are never alone and that you are faithful and good. For some, the next six weeks will feel like a sprint combined with a marathon, with the shopping and wrapping and gifting and gathering. So give us an extra measure of your grace and your peace. And help us to find a pace that's sustainable and faithful. And lastly, God, we give you thanks as we anticipate Pastor Ben's return next Sunday. We thank you for the gift of new life that has entered their family. And we pray continued health for Britt and for Ben and for their new bundle of joy. We lift all these prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please join with me in this prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for your gifts you have granted to us and for the way you feed our souls and change our hearts. We go now to live as followers of Christ, as people of gratitude, compassion, and hope as those who seek to serve and heal the world in Jesus' name. United in heart and purpose, let us pray together the way that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So Hillsborough United Methodist Church, thank you so much uh, for sharing this time together with me. Uh, it has been my honor and my privilege. So let me share these words of benediction with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you favor and give you peace. Shalom. Have a great week.